What does an 80,000-year-old skull tell us about the first people of Southeast Asia and where they came from? You might be surprised. Southeast Asia is emerging as one of the richest and most revealing regions in the world for understanding the early history of modern humans. Caves hidden in the jungles of Laos, Cambodia, Malaysia and Thailand preserve not only the bones and tools of ancient people, but also a silent testimony of survival through one of the most violent natural disasters in Earth's history, the Toba super-eruption. Among the most striking finds are a partial skull from a cave in northern Laos, dated to 86,000 years ago, likely female, and stratified tool layers from Lang Spin Cave in Cambodia, with possible human activity around 71,000 years ago, long before the enigmatic Angkor Wat temple was constructed. These discoveries, combined with the deep skull of Naya Cave in Borneo and stone tool industries of Malaysia and Cambodia, suggest that Homo sapiens reached Southeast Asia long before the eruption of Mount Toba 74,000 years ago, and, crucially, that they survived it. The Laos skull, unearthed from Tam Pa Ling Cave, when first excavated, shook the foundations of migration theory. With dates as old as 86,000 years ago, it represents the oldest securely dated modern human fossil in mainland Southeast Asia. Unlike archaic hominins such as Denisovans, this individual had a small, gracile face and features clearly aligned with Homo sapiens. Its presence that early challenges the notion that modern humans only reached Southeast Asia after the Toba eruption. Instead, it supports the theory of a southern dispersal route, with humans moving rapidly along coastal and riverine corridors through India into Southeast Asia by at least 80,000 years ago. Far to the south, in Cambodia's Karstik Batambang province, another key site offers supporting evidence. Langspeen Cave has been a focus of French-Cambodian excavation since the 1960s, and recent stratigraphic analysis suggests that modern humans may have occupied the cave as early as 71,000 years ago. Although the oldest layers have not yet yielded human fossils, stone flakes, hearths, and organic materials embedded below the cave's more recent Hoabinhian levels suggest an early presence. If confirmed by radiometric dating, this would push Cambodia's human record back to just after, or even before, the Toba eruption. The magnitude of the Toba eruption cannot be overstated. Occurring around 74,000 years ago, it ejected more than 2,800 cubic kilometers of volcanic material into the atmosphere, blanketing much of South and Southeast Asia in ash. The resulting volcanic winter may have lowered global temperatures by several degrees for years. The assumption for decades was that this event caused a genetic bottleneck among Homo sapiens, wiping out entire populations across Asia and reducing the surviving humans to small, isolated groups. But archaeological evidence tells a different story. In Malaysia, particularly at the Bukit Bunu site in Perak, stone tools have been found both beneath and above layers of volcanic ash attributed to the Toba eruption. Some of the artifacts date back more than 100,000 years, suggesting that modern humans were present in the Malay Peninsula long before the eruption and remained afterward. The tools include choppers and bifaces, indicating a technological continuity through the cataclysm. This challenges the theory of total population collapse and supports the idea that Southeast Asia acted as a refuge zone, buffered by its tropical forests and microclimates. Across the strait in Borneo, the limestone caves of Sarawak offer even more compelling testimony. Naya Cave, located in the lush interior of Malaysian Borneo, is home to one of Southeast Asia's most famous fossils, the Deep Skull. Discovered in 1958 and recently reanalyzed, the deep skull belonged to a young individual who lived around 37,000 to 40,000 years ago. Though not as old as the Tam Pa Ling skull, its presence confirms long-term habitation of Borneo by modern humans. Moreover, stratified deposits at Naya show evidence of continuous occupation, with tool use, food remains, and charcoal layers extending back at least 50,000 years. There is no major break in the archaeological record at the time of the Toba eruption, suggesting that these early inhabitants survived the worst volcanic disaster in modern human history. Ancient DNA has now begun to illuminate the ancestry of the people behind these early Southeast Asian sites, 
As of now, only two ancient DNA samples have been successfully extracted from individuals excavated in Hoabinian contexts, one from Farfain in Bolikamse province in Laos, dated to 7,888 years old, and another from Guacha in Ulu Kelantan in Malaysia, 4,319 years old. Although their upper Paleolithic roots remain unclear, these genomes are distinct yet connected to the broad East Asian ancestral pool. They represent a deeply branching East Asian ancestry showing closest affinities to Tianyuan Man of northern China, 40,000 years old, the Jomon people of Japan, who persisted as hunter-gatherers into the Holocene, and isolated indigenous populations like the Onj and Jarawa of the nearby Andaman Islands. Indeed, genetic modelling indicates that Hobinian-related ancestry contributed significantly to the gene pool of many modern Southeast Asian groups, particularly Austroasiatic-speaking peoples. This ancestry is especially pronounced in the Manik of the Malay Peninsula, who retain approximately 35% Hobinian ancestry, alongside East Asian-related genetic components. These findings suggest a long-standing and widespread presence of Hobinian-descended hunter-gatherers throughout the region, who later had mixed with agricultural migrants from southern China during the Neolithic transition. The survival of this ancestry, particularly in groups living in forested highlands or interior zones, offers a genetic echo of ancient Southeast Asia's first peoples, resilient and persistent through both environmental catastrophes and cultural shifts. Meanwhile, the Laos cave skull continues to provoke intense interest and reanalysis. The Tampa Ling Cave in Laos has yielded not only the famous skull fragment, but also an associated jaw and limb bones that point to a fully modern human morphology. The stratigraphy and dating of these finds suggest even earlier occupation, with sediment layers containing artifacts and faunal remains dated to as early as 86,000 years ago. This would place anatomically modern humans deep in the tropical heart of mainland Southeast Asia tens of thousands of years before the Toba eruption, and far earlier than similar fossils in southern China or Vietnam. The Tampa Ling fossils are small and gracile, with no archaic features, fitting within the variability of modern Homo sapiens, rather than any hybrid form. Their discovery has profoundly shaped debates around the southern dispersal route pushing back the timeline for early human occupation of Southeast Asia and suggesting that migration through this region was not only early, but perhaps central to the broader story of humanity's expansion into the East. Together these sites tell a story not of extinction, but of endurance. Early humans in Southeast Asia were not passive victims of nature, but adaptive foragers capable of surviving dramatic environmental changes. They lived in caves and forest shelters, used stone tools suited to their environment, and likely foraged for a wide range of tropical foods, from tubers and fruits to shellfish and small game. Their resilience is recorded in the enduring presence of hearths, artifacts, and in some cases, the bones of the dead. Lang Spin Cave and Tampaling are at the heart of a new understanding of human prehistory. These caves, and others like them across the Malay archipelago, suggest that Homo sapiens entered Southeast Asia tens of thousands of years earlier than once believed. More importantly, they illuminate the pathways of survival, the tropical forests, river valleys and coastlines that provided food and shelter when much of the continent was cloaked in volcanic ash. The story of these early humans is still unfolding. More excavations especially in Cambodia and Laos, may yield additional fossils and artifacts that bridge the gap between the early dispersal out of Africa and the thriving cultures that later arose in the Neolithic and Bronze Age. For now, the oldest skulls and tools in Southeast Asia stand as markers of an astonishing truth, that humanity's ancient roots in this region run deeper and are more durable than once imagined. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe.